What's going on guys? Today's video is gonna be all about my journey learning about recycling. It's gonna look something like this. It's gonna be a lot of fun, let's do it. Daddy, they cover me. Say like and subscribe. I know, like and subscribe. <laughs> Good job. What's up guys, welcome to the video. My name is Travis. I make videos that hopefully inspire you to start a business or make an investment, or if you're already a business owner, maybe I can help you make your business better. So back in May, I did a video called We Started Recycling, where I started to catalog my journey as a small business owner that wanted to create a recycling program that could hopefully compete with the big boy companies around me. The assumption was if I could charge a small fee to cover my driver and my cost to gather single stream recycling from curbside customers, I could then hand sort it, sell the products, and cover my cost of sorting, which essentially would be a break even, which I wanted to start a recycling program because it was important to me. So a break even was the real goal. Obviously I'd like to make money at it, but I didn't know if that was realistic. The goal was to have a 10% participation rate from my customers. Then in June, I did a follow-up video called Where Does My Recycling Go? where I showed what the hand sorting process looked like and the difficulties that I was running into with this program. I will say it can be done it's very tedious and very difficult work because you start off grabbing your big stuff like cardboard and then you go back through and grab some of your plastics that are bigger like milk jugs and stuff like that and once you get to the cans and the small plastics it's just very tedious work then in August I did a video called the Amazon effect where I gave an update on the recycling programs progress and talked about how much participation rate we're getting and a lot of the things I had learned while I started building and created in this program this is your first time seeing one of my videos I would suggest going and watching those videos to get more background on the whole process and the whole journey that we've been through. Recycling is important to me personally because I really, after starting a trash company and seeing how much trash goes into the landfill, um, it started to become very evident to me that we really only have one world and we need to do everything we can to reuse and reduce everything that goes to the landfill um, just to protect our earth and our environment in general. My company alone, with our little tiny recycling program, that we've only been doing for about five months could have kept as much as 50 tons out of the landfill. That doesn't sound like a lot in kind of the grand scheme of things, but imagine what it would look like if every small trash company did this. You know what I mean? The impact we could have together. Then I did a video called Get a Better Deal where I talked about how to negotiate a deal and how when I started the recycling program, the recycling centers around me had wanted as much as $95 a ton to bring in my recyclables, but because they had saw that I didn't need them to run my program they came back and actually offered to pay me ten dollars a ton to bring it to them so at that point it was kind of a no-brainer to take it to them because hand sorting it and spending hours doing all this and then selling the product and that whole thing is a lot of work for a break even. If I can take it to a recycling center and just drop it and be done with it and it's a break even then obviously that would be a better choice right so that's where we're at now we are charging a small fee to cover the transportation and the driver and the truck to go pick up the curbside recyclables uh, as a single stream. We are bringing it to the recycling center and dumping it and we are getting paid $10 a ton, which isn't much. It covers the diesel to go out a route to the recycling center. And I'm gonna tell you some of the assumptions I made going into it and some of the realities that I'm seeing now and where I was right and where I was wrong and where things are now. The original assumption was that it would take me a year to get to a 10% participation rate. I'm happy to say that right now, after five months, we're at a 7% participation rate and it's growing every day. Another assumption is that we could cover the cost of our uh, driver and our truck and everything by charging a small fee for recycling. You really kind of have to charge a fee for recycling if you're gonna do it in my opinion because if you just offer it for free, people are gonna end up using it a lot of times as a second can, just putting in a lot of trash and stuff into this and you're gonna spend a lot of time policing 
your customer. In our case, because we're in a rural area, the people that actually do sign up for the recycling program take it very seriously. It's not like in a city where it's kind of forced on them and they just kind of do whatever they want. In this case, the people that want to do it really want to do it. So the cost of the driver and the truck and everything goes like this. It takes a driver about three hours on average to run the recycling route. We run 20 days out of the month, Monday through Friday. Then there's probably about $30 in diesel that we're burning every day. So I have $2,000 of cost just to run the route as far as labor and diesel. You add in $500 for insurance a month and we're at $2,500. I don't have a truck payment because I just bought this truck outright, but a normal company would have a truck payment. If you bought a good used under CDL truck, I'm gonna estimate about $1,000 a month truck payment. So we would be at $3,500 a month cost if I had the truck payment. And at a 7% participation rate, the recycling program generates $3,250 a month. So right now I'm losing about $250 a month where I would be if I had the truck payment. Because I don't have the truck payment, I'm making about $750 a month. In my mind, that's really kind of a break even because there's probably a lot of little costs that I'm not thinking about or not adding into, um, like maybe tie stuff like that, that uh, they're just gonna happen. They're gonna add up. So me making $750 a month is basically a break even. Also, I have to figure in um, recouping the cost of that truck, even though I bought it outright. Um, it's always smart to figure in a number for that. And I think $1,000 is probably a fair number. So today I'm calling the program about a break even. The interesting thing going forward will be, um, as we grow, we're going to add more and more recycling customers naturally, but I don't think I'm going to have to get to a 10% participation rate um, of where we're at now. In the last five months, my company has probably grown about 15%, but I think the original 10% participation rate um, will be enough to cover the program. I think as we grow, it's gonna be a lower and lower and lower participation rate that I have to get to to cover the cost of this program. So I'm hopeful that um, maybe going into the first part of next year, I can run some marketing programs and do another push and try to get some more recycling customers. I think there's a lot of them out there that are on the fence and they will come off of the fence and get on the program um, if we give them just a little bit of incentive. One of the concerns I have right now about this program is cardboard prices are at a high compared to you know the last 10 years. Commodity prices are at a high and if something changes and cardboard prices fall quite a bit, the recycling center could come back and start to charge me a lot more for the disposal or the um, tip fee at the recycling center. And then I might would, I would have to go back and start charging my customers more, which would lead to lower participation rates. So you tell me in the comments below, am I crazy for doing this? What do you think? Do you recycle? If you're new to the channel, like and subscribe to the video, and I'll see you in the next one.